everyone. Welcome to my channel, Molly Pope Art. I'm Molly, and this is Sweet Pea, who's joining us today. I have a tutorial on how to paint these beautiful poppies in a glass. It's a little still life um, that I have done, and uh, I will be showing you how to paint these poppies from start to finish. Um, and if you would like a free download on how to draw these poppies, just ask a question in the comments, and I will send it to you. And please stick around to the end so that you can see how to paint this beautiful variegated blue and green background that really helps to make these orange poppies pop. So I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. So to begin painting your poppies, um, I am using only eight colors uh, for these poppies. And I began with a pencil drawing and I'm just drawing on Canson multimedia paper. So think of your poppies as a bowl shape. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we start with dark colors down towards the middle of the poppies, down where the petals are growing out from the central area of the, po of the poppy. So to get that notion that those poppies are really deeper and darker down towards the middle of the flower, I used a little bit of ultra, ultra marine blue and I mixed that with permanent red. So what you end up with is kind of like a purpley shade. That color again is down towards the middle, down towards the bottom of the flower, and then coming up and out of those petals, out of the middle of the flowers, um, you're going to gradually start adding some vermilion and some cadmium yellow medium into that mix. These are orange poppies, so we want to get that from that deep dark center. We want to move up and out of the center, and we want to move into more of a lighter orange color. So you're going to use that color, um, those lighter colors out towards the edges of those petals. Again, that's that mix of vermilion mixed with the yellow. And you're going to use um, this ang angle brush is what I'm using right now. And that is just sort of, you're going to wiggle your hand a little bit um, and sort of paint in um, sort of a, an, sort of a wiggle. I guess that's the best way to describe that. That's where if you have shaky hands, unsteady hands, this is actually going to work to your advantage. So you want that uh, petal to appear to have sort of flutters. And where those petals overlap, you're going to add a little bit deeper, darker color um, to that petal that's in the back. And I added just more of the straight red where that overlap occurs. Now, what we want to do to that petal that is overlapping the, um, the two petals in the back, we want to make sure we're adding a lot of highlight color to that area. So that will automatically make that petal that is laying over top of that back petal make it appear to be um, forward or in front of that. And the way you do that is by how you're shading and highlighting. So that mix is a brighter mix of an orange. It's kind of like a, uh, a sherbet orange color, um, more pale, and that is mixed up with using titanium white and yellow. Now there's two little side um, petals that you can kind of see that are sort of around that center of the poppy um, and those are just painted using the permanent red just on its own. So you want it to be deep and dark. Now to paint the front petals, the petals that are in front, um, you're going to use a little bit lighter and brighter paint colors to really make those front petals stand out. So I only use the titanium, or excuse me, the permanent red just at the very bottom of those petals. And then as you come up and out um, to the tips of those petals, you're going to mix um, a brighter orange. And you're going to mix a lot of yellow into that um, vermilion color so that you get a nice bright light orange and then as you get to the very tips of those petals you're going to mix a little bit of titanium white into that and you can already see the difference with the way I'm painting this petal 
Um, I think you can already see the difference of that petal being um, having the appearance of being in the very front of the poppy. And again, that mix is used on the petal that's on the left hand side. Um, and you can see the difference that sort of makes. It already has the appearance of that petal, those two petals being in the front um, by adding those lighter and brighter colors to those petals in the front. Now I'm going back and adding a little bit more folds to those petals by, um, I allowed those petals to dry down, the first petals that I painted. You wanna let those dry down a little bit um, so that they can receive the lighter, brighter color over the top. And that is <clears throat> using a little bit more titanium white and a lot more yellow to that mix. And you can see exactly where I place those highlights that those poppies that poppy flower already appears to have lots of flutters and sort of folds in the petals. Now, starting on the second little poppy, it's a little bit more, um, I drew this so that it was a little bit more closed. So you don't see the center, you don't see that dark center down in that poppy. So the way to paint that is you can completely eliminate that ultramarine blue mixed with red. And you're just gonna use the permanent red um, down towards the bottom of that petal that's in the back. So it really sort of is more of a bowl shape. Um, it's a little bit more closed. It's a poppy that I wanted it to appear to be slightly opening. And so you're gonna use that permanent red down in the folds of those flowers. And then you're gonna go back to using the vermilion, um, which is that red orange color as you come up and out of those um, poppies as they sort of appear to be opening and folding out from the center of the flower. And then on the tips, you're gonna sort of just repeat the same process that you did on the first poppy. And that is by mixing titanium white in with the yellow. You can see that bright yellow on my brush as I'm painting. Um, and that's kind of the color you, you want on the tips of those petals. You want those to be um, light and bright so that it would appear that the sunlight is hitting those edges of the petals. And again, using just a smidge of that permanent red down towards the bottom of the poppy and then uh, on that front petal and then coming up and out of that bottom area, you're gonna use the orange color and you're going to then mix um, the further up you go on that petal, you want to use that yellow. And again, you can see that on my brush. And then on the very tips, you wanna use the titanium white to really make that top of those petals where the sunlight would be hitting it um, light and bright. And you wanna make sure there's a contrast between that front petal and the petal that is in the back side. And now adding more of a highlight, once that sort of dries down a little bit, you can see a lot of that white on my brush and you can see I flip my brush over as I need to reload that area and really get it light and bright. Um, and that's again, str even stronger concentration of titanium white mixed into that orange. Um, and then this 
little area um, on the poppies on the first poppy that was painted. It's really good and fully dry. So now I can go back in and add a lot more highlight to those back petals. All the while you're painting, you are assessing what the painting needs. Does, does the painting need to be, the flower need to be a little bit deep, deeper in an area or does it need to be a little bit lighter? Um, and I felt like I was losing kind of some of that brighter orange color. So I wanted to go in and mix um, a lot more yellow into my orange um, and hit those petals in certain areas. So really you got the feeling that that poppy, those poppies were an orange poppy and not a red poppy. Now, working into the center of the poppy, this is the area of the poppy. Um, if you've ever looked at poppies, they have this beautiful pod that's in the middle of the flower. And um, it actually is a beautiful bright green, sort of a star shape in the center. So in between those sections of that star shape, I wanted those little sections to appear to be really nice and deep. So I, again, I went back to that very first mix um, that I used on the back petals there, and that was a mix of, of um, ultramarine blue mixed with permanent red. And I used a little bit of hooker's green and mixed into that. So it was really, really deep brown color because you wanted the, um, the appearance of that pod, the center of it, and this little separations in the poppy pod to appear to be deep. So then I went back and added a um, mix of medium olive green mixed with hooker's green to really define those bright green areas of that poppy pod in the center. And you just use, um, as you work up and out of that area, um, the highlight color for that is mixing the medium uh, olive green with a little bit of cadmium yellow and some white so that it covers really well and really pops off the page. And you can see to get that detail, I use the tiniest little brush. It's a little liner brush actually, and it's a size zero. So anytime I really need to um, refine my edges, and of whatever it is I'm painting, I'll use that little tiny liner brush just to really get in the, all the nooks and crannies of the painting. To start painting the pod, um, the little flower um, bud of the poppy, uh, you're going to use a mix of hooker's green mixed with burnt umber. And um, I even mixed in a little tiny bit of the permanent red. Uh, you want this to be a really beautiful, deep mix. And the very tops of the um, poppy, um, pod, uh, the very tops of the little bud, 
You want to appear to be really light and bright as if the sunlight were hitting them. So I used a mix of um, medium olive green mixed with a little tiny bit of cadmium yellow and a lot of uh, titanium white. And so you want that those areas, that's your highlight color, you want that to appear to be on the top of the um, the little bud to where it would appear that the sunlight was hitting those areas. And I love painting those poppy buds. Um, I think they are gorgeous. And the mix for the stems is the same mix that is used for the poppy bud. So that was a mix of burnt umber and hooker's green. And even you can add a little bit of red into that since red and green are complementary colors they sort of cancel each other out and make a really beautiful brown shade actually and so that is going to be the mix for the stems the bud and also of the leaves so this little um, still life the flowers are in a little uh, glass vase in some water so when you're painting those buds that are beneath the glass, you don't have to be quite as exact with them and they can be a little bit more, um, not unfinished, but you don't have to put so much detail into them because there would be a reflection on the glass that would somewhat hide some of the detail that is in the stems. And so since you don't paint so much detail in the stems that are behind the glass, the, gla the stems that are behind or underneath the water in the vase, you have even, you, you can put even less work into them because you're not going to see all the detail because it's behind glass and also then underwater, which really sort of distorts the image. So again, you don't have to do quite as much detail to those little parts of the flowers that are um, a little bit hidden by those um, elements in the painting. So I'm adding a lot more detail to that poppy bud, which is beautiful. And um, it is actually just adding more yellow into that um, medium olive green and a lot more white. So those areas of the... Um, bud and the stem really really appear to have sunlight hitting them and again as i'm working into more and more detail um, i'll use a smaller and smaller brush so that you can really get into all of those little areas of the painting that need to be kind of cleaned up a little bit and refined. So you always start with a larger brush when you are first beginning painting. And then as you are getting into more and more detail, you work into smaller and smaller brushes. And again, just using that little tiny brush to add brighter and brighter detail by using more of that titanium white mixed with the medium olive green and just sort of cleaning up and refining those uh, poppy stems.
I roughed in the poppy leaf. There's only um, one little larger leaf on the main poppy flower. And um, I went back in after painting the background and refined this little leaf a little bit more. Um, and you'll see me do that. So again, just roughing in this leaf with that mix of burnt umber and hooker's green, just to kind of get the shape in there so I know where that leaf belongs. And I'm beginning to add the background on this um, poppy still life. And the colors that I'm using to add this background, um, it is a mix of ultramarine blue and the hooker's green. And I'm mixing it with white. And uh, the painting, I left a little tiny space of white around each of the elements of this uh, still life. And it just helps to make it sort of um, makes the images, the poppies and the glass sort of pop off the page. And the way I'm using this, you want to wet your brush, remove the excess water from your brush, and then dip into a little bit of the ultramarine blue, a little bit of the green and some titanium white. And you're going to work quickly when you're laying in this uh, textured background. And you're going to work um, up close to the image and then just sort of blend everything together using a wet into wet technique, which is basically wet into wet means exactly that you're using um, a lot of paint on your brush, a lot of paint on your paper or canvas, and just sort of blending and working um, from shade to shade. Now each little pickup of my brush, you can see I picked up a little bit more brush of uh, the blue on my brush, the ultramarine blue, and now I'm mixing in a little bit of white right onto the painting. So you're kind of mixing and blending as you go. And my next um, pickup, you can see um, I've got a little bit more titanium white on that. And even though um, the upper area on the upper left hand area of this painting had a little bit more of the green mixed in there, um, it all works together. Um, you kind of want to leave those little areas a little bit separate so that you can see a little bit more green in the upper left hand area as opposed to the lower left hand area which is a little bit more blue. So you want to leave your brush strokes in this painting. You're not overly blending everything together. Um, the brush strokes really help to make the texture on your artwork beautiful and interesting to look at. So just keep that in mind. You don't overly blend this area together. Um, and you can see I've got a little bit more blue um, in the lower left hand area. Um, and just kind of working back and forth there, I'm adding a little bit more green. So again, you're just going to go from green to blue and adding white over the top of that and mixing it all together. Um, it's a really fun technique. You could use this for still life. It'd be a beautiful background even no matter what the subject was, um, you know, this one is flowers, a little still life with uh, flowers in a vase. But this technique would be beautiful for any background that you're painting. So just wet into wet and then vary the mix, um, dipping from one color to the next and blending it all together.
I did switch to a smaller brush around the leaf just so I could make sure that I was really getting in those smaller, tighter areas around the leaf. Um, and uh, I just used that to get under the flower, around the leaf uh, sections, um, up next to the stems, and then you can um, blend out those areas into the larger areas by, um, if you feel like it, going back to the larger brush once you get those tiny little areas filled in. Because you kind of want it to all go together um, and not look like that, make that area look like it's completely separate from the painting, but all sort of flows together. I wanted to give this still life painting a sort of a tabletop um, is what you want to consider this um, darker blue and green mix. So anytime you're painting, you know, uh, an, an object that is sitting on something, you want to give it um, what it's actually called a tabletop. And it's just a, a faux sort of um, tabletop line and it's just painted with a darker color that sort of um, gives that glass something to sit on. So I just used um, a more of a green, darker green mix for that tabletop surface area. And also want to paint in a little shadow line for the glass um, so that it's kind of like a realistic, it's a very painterly painting, um, this poppy still life, but you also wanna add some elements in there that you would see in real life, such as a shadow from the glass and sort of that tabletop surface. To begin painting the glass, um, I wanted this to be sort of a, a white, clear glass. So I'm using a little bit of the ultramarine and it is mixed with a titanium white. So it's a really sort of um, light, light blue color and shade um, to give the appearance that there is water in the glass and a sort of a reflective quality to the glass. So, um, it's just that white mix um, and just sort of basing that the rim of the glass, the front of the glass using the ultramarine blue mixed with white. And you also want to go back in and using this little angle brush, um, again, refining those edges. And I wanted it to have the appearance that the glass is a little bit thicker around the top. So I went with a little heavier application across the front of the stems with this color so i just gradually added more and more white to that color 
And then you want to make sure that you that glass is is clear, but it's um, sort of distorting the poppy stems and it's distorting the, the, the background area of this painting. So you want to go back in and add, you know, the whatever colors in the background, you want to sort of add some of that into the painting. So in this, in my background, it was the blue and the green background. So I wanted to make sure that I showed that. Um, and again, just sort of mix it a little bit, those colors into the um, glass, lower glass area of the glass. And then you'll just want to make sure that you are refining those edges on the glass. You're painting the little half round area of the glass as it sits on the tabletop using all of those colors. And again, I'm just kind of refining those edges um, to this little glass vase and adding a little bit of highlight colors around the top of the glass where the sunlight would be hitting that area of that glass a little bit more. And on the left hand side, I want to show that there was a stronger light source on that side. Um, so again, a little bit brighter white on those areas of the poppy. Now I'm adding those sort of background colors um, back into the glass so you kind of see them a little bit so that it is a little bit more of a realistic effect. And this little poppy tutorial still life is almost finished. I do hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions at all, please drop them in the comments section. Um, I'm happy to help you. And thank you so much for spending your time with me and watching my videos. If you learned something, please like and subscribe to my channel so that you're notified when I submit new content. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you spending your time with me. Have a great rest of your day.